It was four in the morning on a freezing October day. William Allen was driving his bus through Ridgewood in Queens when he spotted a two-year-old boy abandoned on the street in only his underwear. William had just started his shift and this was a route he had never normally took. He noticed that the little boy had no clothes on, save for his cartoon character underpants. And as he walked towards him, the little boy threw up his arms. Police later found that the boy, who thankfully made a full recovery, had wandered out of his apartment after his mother left him and his one-year-old sibling home alone. As William said, something that day sent him down a block he normally didn't take, and it no doubt saved that little boy's life. He was an angel. That quote is from Jerome Billings. On a random Friday afternoon, he was at the 125th station on the Lexington Avenue line when he lost control of his motorized wheelchair and then suddenly tumbled out of his wheelchair as he was reaching for his Bible. But Jerome didn't just fall. He actually tumbled off the platform and then right onto the subway tracks and directly into the path of an oncoming train. And then in stepped his angel, Carlos Betancourt, a revenue collection agent. And without wasting a moment, Carlos jumped onto the tracks. They managed to pull Jerome off the tracks and back onto the platform. And Carlos did this in spite of an injury when he jumped down onto the tracks. Ruben Kornick, nine-year veteran, bus driver, who did the right thing, of course. He would always do the right thing. He always has a broad smile as passengers get on that bus. And on that day, he looked in that purse to find a phone number and found that cash. And what did he do? He turned it in. They called Maureen. She was able to go to the terminal and said, wow, how tempting it must have been after he saw that cash. But of course, Ruben Kornick, a real hero, not just a hero in your book, Maureen, but a hero in all of our book. When I thought about Jeffrey Dean and I thought about um, what do we share? Our love for New York, but also a love for community. Um, as a chef, you Every day we serve and we, we get happy when other people are happy and we create hospitality. But you have actually also created your own sense of hospitality on that bus. Learning something, could be very small but big for the person that rides. Learning to speak different languages so you can greet people so make sure that they feel welcome. That is what a great maitre d' at my restaurant should do. So I, thank you for inspiring us. But also the big things, of course, when there's a sad shooting, the right away reacting and going, driving to the hospital right away. That's just not about thinking about small things, it's also thinking about these major things. So um, I couldn't think about a better hometown hero than Jeff Richting. Charlandra Gibson, a bus driver in Queens who last month save the man's life. She's uh, driving her bus and a young man comes in, he's slumped over, and she scolded him after she saved his life. He was choking on a piece of candy and she served um, as, a, as a nurse for 18 years, is it? She was a nurse and she immediately jumped into action and performed the Heimlich and got the candy out and she told him no more candy, but the best part of it all was it made her day to save a person's life and to uh, do something good. And I think that's what it's all about. And, you know, those who serve uh, the citizens of New York in the transit system, you guys don't get enough credit for just being good people. 2004, Glenn's driving over Northern Boulevard when he notices a couple fighting. The man and this couple gets very upset, goes to the overpass to jump. Glenn grabs onto his belt and holds him, dangling above the water. And then Glenn, joined by two construction workers, hauls that man to safety. Incredible in itself. Now, a year before, a heartwarming story, Glenn was in Queens and he rescued an abandoned lab pup from the roadway right in front of his bus. The family ended up adopting the dog, Blizzard, who has since passed, but is a valued, valued member of the families. And then just a short time ago, a couple years ago, we mean, 
Uh, it was another act of, t of really not just heroism, but just the type of attention and the type of commitment that marks Glenn in the brief time I know I know him. He, a young boy, comes on the bus. It's a shivering teenage boy. And the boy turned out to be missing. He couldn't tell Glenn who he was. But Glenn noticed the name of the boy's school on his sweater. He took the time to call the principal. The boy had been missing overnight and was reunited with his family. John Perez cleaned subway stations. And um, he has done this for, the, he was telling me today, this will be his 25th anniversary. And, and when he's done, he's got four stations he works, he spends most of his time on 225th Street in Dykeman. But when he's through doing what he's supposed to do, he even jerry-rigs a broom and puts a cloth on it. Because if he sees a light that's not clean enough, he treats these stations, he says, like his home. And I love the idea of him with his head back cleaning those lights because that's what we all do in New York. Even when we're underground, we look to the sky. In 2007, Bruce fulfilled a lifetime ambition, a dream, by becoming a subway motorman in the MTA. Yet he never lost the instincts that made him such a valuable police officer. In January of 2009, Bruce was on duty with the MTA when he saw a police officer, a police officer named Marvin Turnbull, wrestling with the suspect on the ground at the Utica Avenue subway station in Crown Heights. They were dangerously close to the edge of the platform. Bruce immediately notified the Rail Control Center and told them to stop trains from entering the station. He dropped his radio, ran over to the officer, and together with another bystander, pulled him and the suspect away from the tracks. Officer Turnbull was able to arrest the perpetrator and with Bruce's help, end a potentially dangerous confrontation. Steve St. Bernard was on his way home from work when he saw a, a little girl where she shouldn't have been three stories up uh, on, a, on an air conditioner in a windowsill. Uh, there were others around, but but he was the one who, who took some leadership and knew that there was only one thing that, uh, that he should be doing to keep seven-year-old Kayla safe if she fell. Somebody had to be there to catch her. So he positioned himself underneath her. When he and I were talking, he said he didn't really think much about the, the consequences of, of that or calculate uh, how hard somebody comes down from, from three stories. But she slipped. He thankfully is recovering from the injury to his arm that, uh, that he suffered making that catch. Uh, Stephen is someone who didn't have much time to think about doing something extraordinary. Uh, he just followed his instinct to help, and we're glad he did. Marcia Seal and Brett Nyeth, their actions saved countless untold lives. On May 21st of last year, an emotionally disturbed homeless man boarded a Bronx 4 train with a can of gasoline. Marcia Seal, a train operator who has worked for the MTA for 15 years smelled the gas and radioed the rail control center. Brett, a five-year MTA veteran, answered the call and immediately went to the lead call to investigate. There he found a dozen anxious strap hangers on board and the emotionally disturbed man refusing to move, still holding the can of gasoline. Can you imagine what they all must have been thinking and imagining what might happen? Brett, however, quickly took charge and gently coaxed the man off the train and then immediately poured the gasoline into a trash can. The NYPD apprehended the man in the station and reported he was suspected of pouring gasoline on two other trains earlier in the day. The MTA Chief Transportation Officer Herbert Lamper said it best. The emotionally disturbed man's criminal activity had the potential of causing injury and possibly death to our customers and employees. Please join me in giving a round of applause to Marcia Seal and Brett Nias.